hello one and all to another episode of Deep Lore. Today we are going to be discussing the unexplained creature and cryptid of the ocean, the sea monk. This story takes us way back to 1546 on the chilly coast of Denmark. A mysterious creature was spotted travelling in the Strait of Water between Denmark and Sweden, eventually getting caught up in a fishing net. The person who found the creature notified the local authorities as it was nothing they had seen before. The news passed up through the ranks, eventually finding itself notifying Christian III of Denmark, the reigning king. He requested to see the creature so that he may take a drawing. Before we dive in, I just want to say thank you for all the support I've received. You're absolutely amazing. If you're new here and you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and liking and share this with others who love a bit of conspiracy in their life. New videos every Wednesday and Sunday with smaller videos dotted about on random days. Thank you very much. Christian III described this strange beast as resembling a human monk in his monastic garb and habit, hence a term, sea monk. They estimated his height was around four eels long. Not quite sure why they use that as a reference, but... That that's what they decided to do. Christian III then saw it fit to pass his illustration to a higher authority, Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor. Strangely, in this very same year, a woodworker in Germany created a sculpture that is believed to be of the sea monk from Copenhagen. Perhaps this is evidence of someone requesting a model of the creature found for some sort of reference. As the years passed, the ongoing question to determine if the sea monk was a fish creature that was yet to be discovered, or if in fact it was a humanoid from an underwater city, an alien, or some sort of mix between the two. To increase documentation and research into answering the question, multiple natural history books contained illustrations of the sea monk. In 1553, Pierre Bellon wrote a brief notice on what he called monkfish, unrelated to the monkfish we consume today. He believed the creature to be a merman and referenced writings of ancient mythological creatures such as sirens and tritons. He noted that he was very confident in the existence of sea monks despite never seeing one in person. In 1554, Guillaume Rondelet referred to it as the fish with the habit of a monk and also believed it to be a merman. However, he had reservations as to the accuracy of the drawings shared by people who supposedly saw the creature. This was triggered due to him seeing the drawings that his rival natural historians had, which were significantly different to his own, suspecting that people over-embellished the looks of the sea monk for shock and curiosity. Guillaume believed that his image was the most authentic as his drawing came from Queen Marguerite, who got hers directly from the same man who gave Charles V the original. However, he had some incorrect information, such as believing that the creature was first captured in Norway, which was not true. Four years after Guillaume's natural history book in 1558, Conrad Gesner also wrote about the sea monk, but it must be noted that a lot of his content seemed to be identical to the other two previous historians. Conrad did, however, make the connection with an older piece of work from 1531 called The Firth of Forth, where a similar creature was found off the coast of Poland, 15 years before the capture of the sea monk in Denmark. Subsequently, post-1558, the investigation of the sea monk slowed down and people began to lose interest. There was a big popularisation of the sea monk in 1581, where Guillaume de Bartas published his poem that speaks on the connection between the land and sea, referencing the presence of bishops and friars. The poem goes as follows. Seas have, as well as skies, sun, moon and stars as well as ayah, swallows and rooks and stairs, as well as earth, vines, roses, nettles, millions, pinks, gillaflowers, mushrooms, and many millions of other plants, lance, more rare and strange than these, as very fishes living in the seas, and also rams, calves, horses, hares and hogs, wolves, lions, urchins, elephants and dogs, Yea, men are murds, and which I more admire, the martyred bishop and the cowed friar. Whereof examples, but a few years since, were shrewen the Norways and Polarian prince. 
With the publication of this poem, the concept of sea monks became a lot more popular with the general population. There was then a large time gap, and it wasn't until the early 1850s that the investigation began again. Danish zoologist Steenstrup suggested that the sea monk could have been a giant squid, and the people who found it could have seen aspects like the robe and habit that were nothing more than normal fins. Another zoologist, Bernard Huvelmans, believed it was an errant walrus. Upon recent research, it has now been proposed that perhaps a sea monk could have been an angel shark, which is currently the most believed theory. However, from me looking at it, it doesn't seem close enough for someone to make a strange connection to a monk, but that's up to each individual. This whole mystery was built upon finding one creature, and it has caused a discussion lasting 500 years. What if there was more than just the one occurrence, and there was a whole civilization living in the ocean? This brings us to the sea bishop. First reported in the 16th century, the legend states that it was taken to the king of Poland, who decided he wanted to keep it. It was then shown to a group of Catholic bishops. The sea bishop gestured to be released, which they obliged. The sea bishop then made the sign of the cross and disappeared. Furthermore, another legend appeared in Germany in the same century, stating that a bishop was found and captured. It then refused to eat and died after three days. Could the sea bishops and the sea monks live together in a deep underwater city? Majority of the ocean is still very much unexplored. Perhaps we may find it one day. The legend certainly leaves many questions open. Why do they worship the Christian god? Where are they all hiding? Why do they come so high to the surface? The last sighting in recent times was in 2011 by some swimmers and fishermen in Croatia in the Adriatic Sea. So if this creature is real, they certainly still exist as a race. Perhaps we'll see more of them in the coming years. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Deep Lore. I hope you learnt something today. If you liked it, leave a like, and if you want, subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. We're going to be descending the conspiracy iceberg, and I'd love for you to come along with me.